previous class we completed kingdom mycota today we are going to take up the topic of kingdom plantae they include bryophytes stegodophytes gymnosperms hagiosperms we will be discussing it in the coming topics in detail about all those classes but in brief some certain general characteristic features of the kingdom plantae they are all eukaryotic organisms they have true nucleus with nuclear membrane they have double cell membrane organelles double membrane cell organelles then you know the ribosomes are of 80s type with a larger subunit of 60s and smaller subunit of 40s all these features are there next aspect that you should remember is they are most of them are autotrophic organisms majority of them are autotrophic organisms they can synthesize their own food but a few members are heterotrophic and a few of them are parasitic now for heterotrophic they depend upon other organisms as for some nutrients like insectivorous plant even in the leaf modification your teacher might have told you about the pitcher plant nepenthes utricularia or bladder wort drosera sundew they are all insectivorous plants growing in soil where nitrogen deficiency is there in order to fulfill that they have certain modifications in the leaf so you should remember about those so they are heterotrophic in nature parasitic plants i have shown you the picture of it cascuta reflexa okay they do not have leaves they have roots which enter into the host plant and they draw nutrition from the host plant so they are completely parasitic without the host plant they cannot live cascuta reflexa so there are some exceptions in plants or else majority of them are autotrophic plants they have chloroplast chlorophyll is there they undergo photosynthesis that is what you have to remember about the first characteristic feature of kingdom plantae then uh, the next one is they have cell wall made up of cellulose in case of fungi it was cell wall made up of chitin and cellulose here it is only cellulose cell wall is made up of cellulose so sometimes heavy cellulose and pectin will also be there but they have cell wall animals do not have cell wall what is the reserve food material in case of plants reserve food material is starch they store food as starch in their uh, cells or in their uh, different organs also so uh, food storing organs are there like in the root or in stem there are some modifications you have studied about where they store food roots are like carrot then beetroot they are all storing food in their roots isn't it stem modifications and the potato is storing food okay so remember about that aspect of it then life cycle of plants if you look they have two major life cycle sporophytic now from the seed to the uh, stem system the leaves they are all the uh, what you call it as diploid sporophytic generation of the plant the flower will be having the anther in uh, they'll be having the andrisium gynisium andrisium gynisium we also call it as male gametophyte female gametophyte if you have remembered about that the pollen grain formation we were using this terms the pollen grain has haploid cells the egg cell in case of the ovule of flower the and gynisium they have egg cell which is haploid those stages we call it as haploid gametophyte egg cell is found within the embryo sac in the ovule isn't it Uh, gynesium structure gynesium and then what will it be having ovary styloid stigma when you talk about andrisium it is collection of stamens it will be having anther filament the filament where it connects to the anther we call it as connective anther has anther walls so they have sporogenous tissue which later forms the haploid pollen grains pollen grains with haploid sperm cells okay so those things you have to remember about then the length of the Uh, different phases duration of this gametophytic and sporophytic they vary from plant to plant they can be free living gametophyte or dependent gametophyte they can be free living sporophytic or dependent as in case of bryophytes okay the sporophyte is dependent upon the gametophytic generation whereas in all the other plants gametophytic generation is dependent on the sporophytic plants except for bryophytes when we come to that i'll discuss again okay so there is alternation of generation that you can notice in kingdom plant
This is in general, I am talking about bryophytes, teridophytes, gymnosperms, angiosperms. In general, I have discussed this general characteristics. Now, when we come to kingdom animalia, they are also eukaryotic organisms. They show locomotion, but they are heterotrophic. They cannot synthesize their own food. They are either dependent on the plants directly or they are dependent upon those animals which are feeding on plants. So what I am talking about here is herbivores or carnivores. So they are directly dependent on plants for a source of food or indirectly dependent by eating the animals which eat plants. That is the carnivores. The carnivores feeds on herbivores. Herbivores, they uh, feed on plants directly. So directly or indirectly they are dependent upon plants for the source of food. They are heterotrophic. Okay. They digest the food within a gut, internally in a gut. So uh, then they are also reserve food material is stored as glycogen in our muscles or as fats they are stored. Okay. So then mode of nutrition is holozoic. What do you mean by holozoic is there is ingestion of food, intake of food and complete uh, digestion takes place within the gut. So holozoic type of nutrition we have. There is a definite growth pattern from infant to adults. So it is all, there is growth is also uh, definite shape and length, which is already pre-decided. Okay. Then higher forms of animals, they have sensory structures and neuromotor structures. We are all having that sensory structures. We are all listening. The concepts are going to your brain and you are interpreting them. So neuromotor is also functioning. Sensory and neuromotor. Then they are capable of locomotion, which I have already told you about. Sexual reproduction takes place in majority of the animals and they have gerontal organs or copulatory organs we call it as. So there is sexual reproduction, there is population and then mating or sexual intercourse, population and then. So there is a mating and that we call it as population of male and female followed by embryological development. In case of human beings itself, within the female genital tract, the fertilized egg we are going to fertilize egg, we call it as zygote, which develops into the fetus and they give birth to egg one. Some of them are egg laying. All of them kind of come under animals, birds, insects, vertebrates and invertebrates, they all come under kingdom animalia. So we are general in our characters we are discussing about. Now the next that we proceed for is viruses. Viruses are acellular. Viroids are also acellular. Then uh, lichens. Okay, yes, in the organisms they are placed under. So that is the reason there is no description of that in RH to take us five kingdom classification. Okay. So but uh, now what are the example of viral diseases? Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, H1N1. It's a viral disease, swine flu, what we call it as. Okay. So then there is common cold, flu, then uh, Ebola. Infants, especially in African countries, it's happening. Infants, they have very small head. Brain development will be very small. Micro encephalino and on brain development. So intellectually, they are not well developed. That is because of this Ebola virus. A lot of such viruses are there. Mums, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, which causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Tobacco mosaic virus, which causes tobacco mosaic disease in tobacco plants. Okay, all these are the small pox. Then there is also uh, plants. What are the diseases? I have told you already about tobacco mosaic virus. Historically, the first viruses were discovered in tobacco mosaic plant. The, the leaves had mosaic diseases. Where they filtered this ionosine. Okay, he found that the fluid, he passed it through bacterial filters. Bacterial filters are the filtrated bacteria error. They don't go down. But he found that the fluid that he collected, it again caused the disease. So he came to a conclusion that the pathogen should be smaller than bacteria because it is passing through bacterial filters. Okay, so the, that is how the uh, DJ Ivanovsky, a Russian biologist, discovered viruses. But they have not named it as viruses. So uh, then uh, Benjamin is a biologist who named it as contagion viral fluid. Contagious fluid. It can cause infection. That is what they named it. 
Okay, Stanley crystallized viruses. That is his contribution. Viruses are made up of two chemicals, nucleoproteinaceous, I told you, nucleic acid and proteins. They are obligate parasites, compulsory. Viruses can be, they are as crystalline from outside the host cell. But within the host cell, they undergo replication. They take control of the host machinery and completely destroy the host cell. Okay. So that is what happens whenever we have viral infections. They utilize our protein synthetic machinery in each and every cell and then they multiply. They require only two components, nucleic acid, proteins. proteins. They don't have cell wall, cell membrane, nothing is there. Animals in the animalia, we should also remember one more point, they do not have cell wall. They have directly cell membrane. Okay. So obligate parasites, genetic material can be either RNA or DNA. Now, uh, tobacco mosaic virus is an RNA virus. SRV, sarcoma rouse virus is also uh, RNA virus. Now, bacteriophages, virus which infects bacteria, what do we call them as? Bacteriophages. Virus which infects blue green algae, cyanophages. Cyanobacteria infect one of the virus, same and three, cyanophages. Okay. Plant viruses, what they are known as this, the genetic material might be single-stranded RNA or it can be double. Single-stranded RNA is predominantly infecting plants. Okay. Whereas in case of animals, it can be single-stranded RNA or double-stranded RNA or double-stranded DNA. That is what infects animals, including us. Bacteriophages are being modular, eh? double-stranded DNA is formed. The proteins in case of tobacco mosaic virus, just see the diagram of the expo. We are having the protein coat made up of unix called as uh, capsomias. The complete structure we call it as capsid, protein coat. Capsomias, okay. Centrally located RNA uh, is the genetic material in case of tobacco mosaic virus. I have drawn the diagram of bacteriophage. They have a head. Okay, and tail region with basal plate, they have tail fibers. Six of them are there, external plate. It's a bacteriophage with head, neck, and the basal plate, which is hexagonal. We are not going into details of study of bacteriophages, but this is also one of the structure of a virus which infects bacteria. Okay, so remember about that aspect of it. Now, viroids, very briefly, they have given in your textbook, it was discovered by Dyla. Diamond discovered the viroids. They are naked nucleic genetic material which infects the plants. Potato spindle tuber viroid infects potato plants and they cause a disease called as potato spindle tuber disease. So it is genetic material, here it is RNA, genetic material which infects them. So we call them as viroids. That is the brief description of it. Lichens, you know about it, or lichens, however you pronounce it as. They have an algal part, we call it as phytopion. A fungal part, we call it as mycopion. So the algal part helps in synthesizing the food. The fungal part, okay, it helps in capturing nitrogen and other things. So it's a symbiotic association between algae and fungi. Okay, so the phytopion and mycopion. Lichens are of different types. It can be uh, crush those lichens, like you can find, find on boulders, paint droplets in the area. You can't peel it off. Okay. Then there are some of them on the barks of the trees which you can peel off. We call it mm -hmm. as folios lichen. Three types of lichens are there: crush those, folios, fruticos lichens. Fruticos lichens they produce fruiting bodies. Since they have phycobion, it can be ascocar or basidiocar. Basidiocar is the majority of the time is an ascocar. So we can understand lichens are also used for manufacturing litmus paper. Lichens are pioneers in plant succession. When one day they are first to plant uh, organism grow up with lichens. So we call them as pioneers of plant succession, which we will be studying next year. So remember about this concept that completes our chapter biological classification.